All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to our unit on the individual's ethical responsibilities in the face of climate change. So, as you may be able to guess from the fact that I'm in a t-shirt and I got those crutches behind me, this is my first uh, lecture that I'm recording post-injury. But anyway, today we're talking about Ratterman's paper, Bearing the Weight of the World. And this paper is a direct argument against the paper that we read on Monday, uh, Johnson's paper on um, the individual's responsibility to co in a, a tragedy of the commons, right? So just to recap very briefly, Johnson, he didn't think that the individual has any responsibilities in the face of a you know commons tragedy like climate change. The reason for this is um, actions that deplete or harm the environment, they're not amoral in themselves, right? There's nothing like amoral about driving a big car in the way that there's something amoral about theft. It's only amoral because of the context, because it's destructive of the environment and it's going to have bad, a bad outcome. But the catch is, is that whether you drive a big car or not, or whether you take any kind of environmentally destructive action or not, the outcome is going to end up being the same. So whether you do it or not, the environment's going to get destroyed either way. You know, it's a tragedy of the commons type situation. So there's no ethical reason for you to refrain. It's, you know, there's also no practical reason because it's not going to make any difference whether you do or not. Now, Raderman disagrees with this logic, and he has a fairly sophisticated philosophical argument here. A lot of it comes down to this argument about the pebbles, this metaphor about the pebbles. And if you recall, Johnson, you know, he tried to anticipate objections that the reader may have. And one objection that he saw was the reader might say, look, by your logic, this would be okay. You have this crowd of people, and they each put a pebble down on some person until that person's crushed under all the pebbles and they die. There's nothing abnormal about putting a little pebble on somebody. I mean, that's not going to cause them any harm in, in and of itself. And whether a person puts a pebble down or not, it doesn't make any difference to the outcome. Now, Johnson, he, has re he had some reasons why he didn't think that was a good analogy. He didn't think that that argument worked against him. And, you know, if you can look back on the slides if you don't remember what his argument was. But um, Raderman takes this case and he says, no, this is a good metaphor for what's going on with climate change. If you act in an ecologically irresponsible way, you are like somebody putting piling uh, rocks on or pebbles on somebody until they die. And if you were a part of that mob, you wouldn't put that pebble down. You know, you would think that was abnormal. And the same thing applies to climate change. So Johnson's argument, he says, look, it does license this kind of behavior. It do, if, if you live by Johnson's moral code, it would make it okay to be part of a mob crushing people to death with rocks. And so we would reject it in that situation. So we, sh we should reject it in the case of climate change as well. And I'll let you take a look at uh, you know, the actual argument in the paper and in the slides. I'm not going to recap it here. It's fairly complex. But um, it's important to note that Ratterman also rejects the position that uh, Johnson took himself to be arguing against, which is what both of them call the Kantian position. Now, the reason they call it the Kantian position, remember Kant, he was a deontologist, and he had this thing called the categorical imperative, which said that anytime you have to make a moral choice, you should only take an action if you would want everybody doing it uh, all the time, right? So in the case of the environment, what that would mean is that you should only act in such a way that would be fully sustainable if everybody in the world did it. And, you know, there's 7 billion of us, so that means that you would have to live a very stringent life in order to be uh, fully, living in a way that would be fully sustainable if everybody did it. Your carbon footprint would have to be very, very small. Um, your use of resources would have to be very, very small would have to be far, far below what the average American uh, lives like. I mean, we're talking substantial sacrifices here, you know, not climate controlling your home, probably not even driving a car at all. Um, very substantial uh, sacrifices. And Raderman says you're not really obligated to do that either. You know, he, agree he kind of agrees with Johnson as far as that. And here he doesn't really have like a, like a sophisticated of a philosophical argument. He kind of appeals to your intuitions, which is that, look, ethics can only ask so much of us. And it, after a certain point, it becomes unreasonable. You have this thing in ethical theory called the super augurative. And what that is, is it's an action that, you know, 
somebody who's good may do it, but it's not required to be good. For instance, um, you know, we all feel like giving money to charity is a good thing, but we wouldn't require that people give like in order, we wouldn't say that in order to be a good person, you have to give like 50% or 75% of your money or 100% of your money to charity or anything like that. We admire people who do that, but it's a supererogative. It's above and beyond the call of duty. Um, it's the same thing, for example, with volunteering. You know, we think volunteering is a good thing. Maybe we think people should volunteer a couple hours a week. But somebody who volunteers like 40 hours a week, um, you know, we would say that's not really a requirement to be good. It's a supererogative. And Johnson says, sorry, uh, Ratterman says, look, living in a sustain fully sustainable way, that's by far a supererogative. You just can't reasonably expect that out of people. Now, I want you to think about the case that uh, Ratterman builds here. First of all, the case he has against Johnson and decide which one of them you think is right. I mean, is this metaphor, is this whole metaphor of the pebbles and the mob, is that a good description, really a good description for the kind of, um, the kind of ethics that Johnson is calling for? You know, for one thing, this would mean that uh, acting in an environmentally irresponsible way is the same kind of ethical action as directly committing violence against somebody, and you may find that a little bit hard to swallow. So I want you to think about that. But also think about if Ratterman is going to reject that, if he's not just kind of weaseling out of where his own argument leads to. Because it seems like his own logic is pointing towards the idea that you need to live a fully sustainable life and you need to make all these sacrifices. And at the end, he just kind of vaguely calls for people to do something without really specifying you know, how far they should go. And it seems like he's just kind of uh, waving his hand at that point and saying, like, yeah, you know, I don't really know, but, okay, so anyway, I want you to think about whether you find his answer to be satisfying, and we'll discuss it on Friday.